The Adeptus Mechanicus has enjoyed religious freedom since the days of the Great Crusade, a very unique and sometimes problematic rite within the Imperium that extends to all other Forge worlds. The priesthood has the divine privilege of worshipping the Omnissiah or the Machine God without the intervention from the Ecclesiarchy or the Imperial Church. Their belief is structured around the doctrines of the quest for knowledge. Whether alone or in a communal setting, this quest is pursued through scientific and exploratory endeavors. And much like all quests, the pursuit of these scientific wonders is filled with traps and roadblocks that have the potential to corrupt any tech priest that is too open-minded. Which is why it is the duty of the priesthood of Mars to act as their own police force in order to prevent such widespread corruption from occurring. Sadly, they cannot always guard every Magi or Tech Priest from the machinations of chaos, and through the Admech's long history, many have succumbed to these deadly deceptions. When a Tech Priest betrays his oath to the Machine God and turns his back on not only the Imperium, but Holy Mars itself, they are labeled a hair tech and are executed on sight whenever possible, or so that is what the Priesthood tells the High Lords of Terra. But with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to talk about the motivation behind becoming a hair tech, or heretic. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. What I try to do with these 40 facts videos is I present a lore portion in the beginning, a hobby portion in the middle, uh, usually like a painting tutorial, a showcasing, or something like that, and then a community portion at the end where I answer the questions that you guys have for me uh, from the previous 40 facts video. So if you guys want me to respond to any type of comment, just comment down in the comment section below, and I'll talk about it in the next episode. Episode. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on the hair techs. There are a lot of reasons that trigger a tech priest's fall to chaos or at least them turning their back on the priesthood. Some hair techs no longer care or believe in the Omnissiah and now view him as a false god. And this is because much like Imperial citizens, the members of the machine cult are indoctrinated and brainwashed into believing in the divinity of the machine god from their birth. And then when prayers and venerations do nothing to repair or even improve the inner workings of a machine, the theology of the machine spirit starts to fall apart. This usually leads hair techs to worship the chaos gods, for these gods can truly make a difference in the life of the magi. And then there are the hair techs that seek knowledge for their own selfish desire. They don't bother asking if the Omnissiah is real, they simply want to harness the power that the machine spirit provides. As a result of so many hair tech ideologies, there is no concrete central authority for these traders. They simply operate as best they can on their own away from the powerful priesthood that they once belonged to. This makes hair techs more vulnerable, but at the same time harder to catch as they can operate in smaller, more clandestine manners, sometimes within the Imperium itself. Hair techs are not tied down by the rules of the priesthood of Mars. They enthusiastically violate all rules set by the Imperium and the priesthood. They explore xenotechnology, archaeotech from the dark age of technology, and they dabble in all facets of technology related to the manipulation of energies of the warp. They may even be bold enough to develop entirely new technologies, combining components in forbidden manners to produce ultimate tech heresies. They may go as far as sharing the tools of their trade and the secrets of their ways with those who have not been trained in the mysteries of the machine god. A hair tech actively seeks out new technology and continuously experiments with new techniques in ways that were once forbidden to them. They no longer believe that any information, experiment, or device can be ignored. Rather, they deliberately focus on those technologies that the Mechanicus' teachings taught them to avoid, with a particular interest in developing warp-based technologies. There's actually very few technologies that are beyond the hair tech's interest, though inevitably many of their inventions and much of their research tends towards the development of tools of destruction as they build these weapons for their fellow devotees and any other type of new master. Because hair techs are isolated from the resources of the priesthood, they must rebuild their own bodies with whatever they can find. Most hair techs are just as obsessed with turning their bodies into machines as loyal servants of the Omnissiah. The only organic compounds on these traders is usually the mutational gifts of their Chaos God Masters. Their cybernetic and sometimes biological enhancements not only improve their technological acumen, they also grant them additional abilities in combat. A hair tech is likely to be more physically hardier as well as much more powerfully armed than even the highest ranking magos of the Mechanicus. 
Some in the Imperium think of those referred to as hair techs to be a unified force like the Adeptus Mechanicus itself. This is not the case, as there is no galaxy-spanning organization dedicated to tech heresy, including the Dark Mechanicus, which is often treated as being a monolithic entity like the Adeptus from which it schismed. Rather, there are countless fiefdoms in Dark Forge worlds or Hellforges, each ruled by a fallen Magos, powerful enough to dominate cadres of his fellows and enslave Mechanicus thralls and servants. And just like the warbands of the Traitor Legions and all other servants of Chaos, the corrupted tech priests war amongst each other more so than the Imperium. Hair techs are always following a path of constant innovation. A hair tech may be capable of drawing power for their devices directly from the warp and controlling them with summoned warp entities. They might dabble with the concept of artificial intelligence, memory transference, or even attempt to capture and preserve the souls of sentient beings within their devices through their arcane knowledge of the warp. Many of these inventors hold on to the idea that the new and the novel is always preferable. For them, the joy of a new idea or the recovery of an unknown bit of knowledge is a triumph, even if the idea has already been made obsolete. With each new advancement, their passion for further success grows, as does their appetite for ever more knowledge, regardless of its source. This hunger for knowledge drives most heretics, and they willingly use the ruinous powers and their demonic servants as a source. At other times, they seek out Xenotechnology and Archaeotech. They even coordinate raids upon Imperial strongholds for the sole purpose of recovering their records of whatever device can be found. In many Heretech's mind, there is no greater purpose in life than serving the cause of the advancement of technology and knowledge. Any sacrifice is justified in the pursuit of this end. Because of this devotion to knowledge, it is relatively rare for the Heretex to be raised by the Dark Gods as a demon prince. All too often, Heretex end up the components of one of their own inventions, with too little left of the original body or its personality to even receive such a reward from the Dark Gods. However, those few who are granted this gift continue to spread their chaos tainted technology all across the galaxy. And that's the lore on the hair tech. I hope you guys enjoyed the lore and I hope it inspires you guys to either start an Adeptus Mechanicus army because the Adeptus Mechanicus line is awesome and there is kit bash potential uh, within that faction. Hopefully GW in the future creates a Dark Mechanicus faction or at least we get some type of like miniature for like Blackstone Fortress or uh, even Necromunda that is a hair tech. That'd be awesome. Uh, but also, um, I hope this inspires you guys to maybe include a a character like a hair tech in your uh, role-playing game set in the 40k universe that's something that i've talked about in the past um especially like with dark heresy um and, and like even you can create D, D uh style games set in the 40k universe and a hair tech is awesome because he is the perfect character for plot hooks um he's his heresy is teaching others that are outside of the priesthood about the technologies of, uh, about, you know, the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, so hopefully that inspires you guys to create um, some homebrew lore at home uh, that has to do with Dark Mechanicus and hair techs and stuff like that. Uh, but for the hobby portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue painting uh, some models for my Adeptus Mechanicus army uh, in the form of an Honor Grid Doom Crawler. Just like the feral knob that I was working on yesterday, this Onager Doom Crawler already has a lot of work done. As you guys can see, I've painted the black, done some uh, metallic highlights, and even uh, painted some of the trim. Uh, but I do need to work on the top part. Uh, it is unassembled, um, and what I'm going to try to do is focus on two colors today, black and copper. Um, most Mostly I'm going to be using black. Uh, so let's get to it. After painting the black for a while, I realized that this is going to be something that's going to take way longer than just one uh, day. So it's going to have to be a multiple episode thing. Uh, subscribe to the channel to get my uh, progress pics and my progress videos on this Onager Doom Crawler. I'll probably be doing more Mechanicus lore. What I want to do for you guys now is showcase the uh, mega or the feral knob that I was working on yesterday and the 
troops. Um, I know I posted it on my Instagram, but I also want to show you guys here. Uh, as you can see, um, it is a 12-man squad, so 11 feral orcs and their knob. Uh, the knob came out pretty awesome. It actually blends really well with the troops. I was scared that because the feral boys were naked and this was mega armored, uh, it wouldn't look so good, but I like it. And with the lore portion and the hobby portion done, it's time to move on to the community portion of the video. And I'm going to answer the questions that you guys left off in yesterday's 40 Facts video. 40 Facts and Lore on the Orc Runt Herd Zodgrod Wartsnaga. Um, if you guys have questions for me uh, for next episode or any comments that you guys would like me to react to, just comment down in the comment section below. Um, but let's get into it. This question comes from Jade. One of the best parts of y'all's channel is your willingness to take the time to do Q&As. No other channel really interacts with their fans like this. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And that's actually something that I've been trying to work on more uh, lately. Uh, especially not just on YouTube, but like in other um, platforms. So Instagram, I try to answer messages as best as possible or comments. Uh, we have a TikTok. I've been trying to be uh, pretty active on there. Not not as much as, as um, uh, Instagram, uh, but also Facebook, trying to get to, to basically answering everything that you guys have uh, and any question that you guys have on all those social media. So just like trying to communicate with you guys and, and, and interact uh, has been a lot of fun. So thank you guys for throwing questions and stuff like that. Uh, also, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok and um, Facebook if you haven't done so already. It's just another platform for you guys to um, see what we've been working on. I feel like the hobby portion, uh, I, I showcase more on those uh, platforms more so than on YouTube. The YouTube is kind of just lower. Um, so there's always that. Uh, but thanks for the kind words. Uh, the next question comes from Carrie Bot. Could you hire a bunch of freebooters to help stop a wog or would they just fall in line once they come into close proximity to it? Um, they would more than likely uh, not fall in line. I don't like that concept. Like orcs are not like locusts where like if you get a bunch of them, they become like a like almost like a hive mind type of situation. Uh, orcs, especially freebooters, are really looking for their best interest. And usually the best interest of orcs is to go where the fighting is the best. So if the orcs are about to fight, like if you hire orcs to go fight a wog, um, they're more than likely going to tur turn around and kill you because there's uh, more loot to be had. Uh, so it's not so much that they are fighting with the wog that's coming. Uh, they're using things to their advantage to get the most out of their situation. Freebooters are not to be uh, trusted. Uh, they're, they're pirates. Um, they're orcs. So um, in all of the, the lore, uh, whenever anybody deals with freebooters, that person, even though they're the ones paying, they get um, uh, beat too. So not a good idea. Uh, next question comes from Mafi A. What do you think of the old ones not being mentioned in the new Orc Codex? I haven't read the new Orc Codex. It's a bummer. Um, but are you sure they weren't mentioned or are they just referred to as brain boys? Because if they're referred to as brain boys, then brain boys are old ones. And that's the whole process of like, um, like the orcs don't really know or don't care about the old ones. Um, but yeah, I would have to, I would have to take a look at it. I haven't, I haven't seen it. Uh, next comment comes from Swift R Revoir. I love these videos, never get tired of them. They always tell me stories I feel like otherwise I would never hear. I also get to read stories that I feel like I would never read. Like I would never, like especially when I work with um, other factions, uh, so like Dark Mechanicus, the Necrons, things like that. I those those armies don't uh, draw my attention. They don't just they. They seem kind of eh. So I would never read the codex if I didn't have the ability to read this to you guys. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's absolutely awesome. And it's on both sides. I'm also learning awesome stories and uh, you guys are enjoying it. So I'm glad. Next question comes from Hatchet Fish Blue. In your older video titled 40 Facts and Lore on Necron Leaders in Warhammer 40k, at 1323, there's a Necron Lord called, it sounds like, Orukkin. 
Uh, that seems like a very unusual Necron Lord. Can I... Can... I can't find any information on him. Would you please make a video divulging more information about this character? Um, there's Orican, Orican, O-R-I-K-A-N, um, and he's the Diviner. I don't think he's a Necron Lord, though. I, I think he's um, something else. I don't know what seers are called in the... Uh, let me see if I can look it up. Oh, he's a Chronomancer. So he... A Necron Cryptek and a Potent Chronomancer. Um, so, I don't think we have a 40, or well, we do, we have a 40 facts video on him, it's an older 40 facts video, so you can check that out. If not, I'll create a, a 40 facts on Orokin sometime soon, because I actually have some, um, Necron stuff that I have to paint for a friend, so it'd be an excellent time to, like, talk about Necron lore, and then paint some Necron stuff. So subscribe to the channel to get that, um, if that's who I think it is, Orokin. Um, but yeah. Uh, next comment comes from Dead Skrilla S K R I T. Good video, easy to understand, and I, being new to all this, thanks for making it easy to pick up. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, I really like the fact that this channel has become like uh, a good spot, a source, a uh, good resource for uh, newcomers into the hobby. And now with me adding like um, hobby bits and like community stuff, hopefully. Um, it helps even more, and it really solidifies you guys staying here um, uh, within the hobby, I mean. Uh, next question comes from Anton Chirgur. <laughs> uh, have you seen Kamazar Gamza's video on 3D printing, and how much cheaper is it than buying models from GW? I have not seen um, his 3D printing uh, video. He was really good for, like, uh, trash terrain. Uh, that those that's a really good series you guys should check that out he probably has a playlist on it um, but no I have not I have a 3d printer and um, I mean yeah it might be cheaper to 3d print uh, models depending on like how much you want to spend on your 3d printer I know that this one I have the da Vinci mini it's trash it, it does you cannot print good stuff on it it has to be like really big things um and you don't have to worry or you don't have to care about details so for terrain it serves its purpose but for like actual 3d printed um models to the scale of 40k or gw no probably not um now if you want to purchase like a really expensive 3d printer like let's say you drop two thousand dollars right and um You've been playing 40K for as long as I've been playing 40K. Yes, the 3D printed model is probably going to be cheaper, um, especially now that it's so easy. The the templates or whatever they're called, like the um, um, yeah, the templates to print out all of these miniatures are more uh, easily available or readily available. Um, but at the same time. Um, it's just a whole new, uh, it's a whole different like monster and stuff like that. Um, should GW worry about 3D printing? They already are. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I, this is something that people warned uh, GW about from the very beginning, though. I remember uh, Mini Wargaming. It was a Q&A with Mini Wargaming Matt, and he was like, 3D printing is not to the level of GW yet. Um, emphasis on the yet. And here we are. We are at the now. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah. Next question comes from Zero Noctis. Could you build an army of orcs completely painted purple and show up to a tournament with empty bases because the boys are too sneaky to be seen? You should try it. Definitely. Um, I know I would. Um, that would be really, really hilarious. Uh, and then they'll probably say, like, okay, bust out the real stuff, because, yeah. Um, and for all those that don't know, purple makes things sneakier, red things, red makes things go fast, yellow makes things go boom, what's the other one? Oh, blue makes things lucky, uh, things like that, yeah. Uh, Ice X Gaming says, what is your thought on the Beast Naga box? I think it's cool. It's a little expensive, $200 for just one army. That's why I didn't pick it up. I feel like if it was like the Beast Nagas and Space Marines, I would have bought it right away. Um, but even with them saying like, this is the only way to get the codex, the Orc codex, I still didn't buy it. So 
I might get it in the future, but if the codex comes out, I'll just buy the codex by itself. Uh, but yeah. And then um, Jericho's end. This is going to be the last question. How did humans not find Necron Tomb Worlds in the Dark Age of Technology? Maybe they did. Overwrote them and used them as Men of Iron, then Void Dragon Factory reset them. Oh, okay. And then the Void Dragon Factory reset them and bam, war. That's why Eldar helped put them down and the Emperor popped up and smacked Void Dragon down to Mars. It could be possible, yeah. And yeah, I mean, you answered your own question. They um, they did find them. I'm, I'm pretty sure that during the Dark Age of Technology, humanity found a lot of tomb complexes, uh, but either the, um, what are they called? Canoptic constructs basically defended the, the tomb world and killed the humans, or they took bits and pieces of that Necron technology and created like, you know, frost blades and all this other kind of um technology and stuff like that um but yeah and those were the questions for today if you guys have more questions for me please actually one just drew my attention takashi the twin unpopular opinion i really don't like this new format i love the old lore videos but i still love and respect your work guys yeah i feel like um there's um that I can see that, yeah. Um, the cool thing is that you still have the the old style lore videos in the beginning of these 40 facts videos. So the, that beginning part, <coughs> sorry, that beginning part is just, <coughs> so that beginning part is just lore. And um, as we progress, it's gonna get, and that beginning part is just lore. And I know right now the big problem is that like, oh, the lore portion went from, um, you know, 10 minutes to like four minutes or or what have you. But no, there, we have 40 facts videos where um, like the 40 facts and lore on the major faction, no, the major uh, Forge Worlds, which I think went out last week. That lore portion was like, I think 15 or 14 minutes. Um, so we still are um, putting out lower content it's just not as big and i really do appreciate uh the fact that um you know you're, you're gonna continue to, to watch and all that kind of stuff like you said at the end um but yeah now those were the last questions for today um thank you guys so much for listening if you guys want to if you guys like these types of videos hit the like button tell your friends and consider supporting us on patreon it's just a dollar a month uh thank you for watching and talk to you tomorrow this was gersh one with one mind syndicate signing out <laughs>